Hi, welcome back to the White Oak Library's Paint and Sip on YouTube. So for today, we will be doing a painting right here. So the painting you're seeing is a fall night scene with some falling leaves and a full moon and a gray background. And it is on an 11 by 14 canvas. The other items that you're gonna need are a palette. You're gonna need just a cup to put some warm water in and you're gonna need a few paint brushes. So you're gonna need one that has a flat end here and then you're gonna need a few that are pointier. You can do one that's really small, one that's really big. You don't need all of them, but you're definitely gonna want a larger one and a smaller one. You're also gonna need a pencil for some outlining and then some paints. You're gonna need yellow, red, black, and white. And that's everything you're gonna need for this paint and sip. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start off with the first step for how to do this painting. So what I'm gonna do is just grab any pencil. You can use a regular pencil like this or a mechanical pencil, whatever you prefer. And we're just gonna sketch out the moon. So initially when I first did this painting, I just used a bowl, but then I realized that I wanted the moon to be bigger. So I'm just gonna freehand it. Don't worry, it's not gonna be perfect. It's fine, nothing in this world is perfect anyway. All right, so I'm just gonna start off from the top right corner and I'm just gonna drag my pencil to about here or like a third of the way into your left. And I'm just gonna start by rounding off the section that I'm gonna use for the moon. And it doesn't have to be perfect at all. You're gonna paint right over it. So we're gonna go ahead and make a half moon to cover a decent portion of the actual canvas. And I want mine to be just a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna make an additional ring around that. I'm just gonna go from there. Just like that. Wonderful. So now you have your half moon. It's not gonna be pretty, but it's fine. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the background. So I want this part to be gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing in my gray paint. I'm gonna start off with more white than black because I want it to be more of a lighter gray color. And go ahead and put that white down, put a decent chunk down. You can always put more down, but you know, less is more to begin with. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the black. And I'm just gonna put just a little drop in, just like that. So now I'm gonna grab my flatter paintbrush tool like this. I'm gonna wet it first. Clean it on my paper towel. And I'm just gonna mix it in. So you're gonna want your gray to be like pretty light because you're, go you're gonna go ahead and go and put in more black and white in later. So right now, what I'm gonna do is just gonna start from the top. And I'm just gonna work my way down, putting in my gray, adding more in when I need it. And if you have some of that black still on your paintbrush mix in, it's completely fine because it's just gonna add a little bit of dimension to your background anyway. We're gonna go ahead and put in some more of that later, but if you have some in your paintbrush now, it's all good. I'm gonna avoid the half circle for now because I'm gonna refine it closer to the end. So while you're filling in the gray, what do you love most about working at a public library? Well, I'm a people person, but I've always been really big into customer service. That's the kind of person I am. If I can provide any type of service to you that makes your life easier, wonderful. So during this position that I'm in, I'm constantly introducing people to new things such as like e-services, like e-book reading through Overdrive or Libby, and I find that that's extremely rewarding for some of our older patrons. If they can be at home and find books online and just attach it to a device, that's less walking for them, less traveling for them, and they love that. Also, it's just convenient. Um, if I can also teach you how to be an independent person more than anything else, that's amazing. So if I can show you how to do one thing, and then you come back later and you can do it by yourself, I love to see that. So overall, just helping people learn how to be more independent, learning certain tools they may never have thought they'd be able to use, I think that's the most rewarding part of working in a public library, for sure. So if you can see, I'm just putting in a lot of really large strokes. This is just like your base. It doesn't have to be perfect whatsoever. You're really just kind of putting it on. I'm just doing back and forth motions like this, just so it can be somewhat even. But like I said, we're gonna go in and add some black and some white later anyway. So your dimensions are gonna definitely pop for that part. And I'm still trying to avoid that half circle for now. Even though I did not just avoid that. <laughs> So closer to the end, down here. If you don't fully paint the bottom part, that's all good. It doesn't necessarily need to be added in all the way. 
but you do want a decently even coat. So what is your previous experience with painting? So in terms of like painting itself, I never really did painting until I was in college. I've always been into art though. When I was younger, I used to draw a lot of like anime, Japanese style art. Like that was my thing. One of my best friends in the seventh grade, she showed me how to do some artwork like that. And that was it for me. Um, but when I was in college, I took an art class that showed me how to use a lot of different mediums. We did charcoal, we did just stenciling, and it was amazing because that's where I initially learned how to start painting. Not saying that I'm a painter, because I'm not. <laughs> but I do enjoy it. I think it's an extremely relaxing thing to do, and it's just fun. Like, if you can see something and then try and recreate it or make something like on your own, I think it's just an extremely rewarding thing. So my first real experience though was in college, so like kind of late in life. I've covered most of the canvas now, so what I'm going to do is create a little bit more gray, and I'm going to go ahead and outline just around the edges of the moon. I'm going to grab some more white, and an even less amount of black. Okay, mix it in again. Make sure this time you want it to be pretty even, just because you already laid down some gray. Gonna mix it in really well. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start outlining the edge of the moon. Like that. How has leading a painting class changed your thoughts on painting? So I was really thinking about this question because when I was painting, I was just doing things and just, you know, relaxing, living my best life. And then I was like, wait, if I have to teach this, I have to know what to talk about. So I've just gained like a huge appreciation for anybody who actually teaches any type of art form, painting, sketching, like sculptures, I, I can't even imagine. But like generally speaking, I've just got a huge appreciation for that because now I know that when I am teaching a class such as this, you have to break down things just to make sure that everyone's understanding and can feel as if their explanation or your explanation would make sense to them. So there's so many more words than I would have thought I would need it. <laughs> Um, which is not a problem because I like to talk, but I now know for sure like this has a lot more thought into it than I initially had imagined, but like I said, a greater appreciation all around. So Colleen, your painting classes I'm sure were amazing because you break down things so well, so even a bigger appreciation for you and all that you've done. It's looking really good to me, and like I said, it'll be perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add in just a little bit of black. I'm just gonna spread it through. Like I said, I wanted to create some dimension. I'm gonna put it in where I have that gray, because I don't need a lot, just like a drop. I'm gonna get my brush coated. Mix it in with some of that previous gray. And I'm just gonna put in a few strokes just back and forth. And because that paint is still wet, it's gonna blend in really well. So still the same back and forth strokes like this. Nothing crazy. Take your time. If it looks like I'm going fast, it's just how my hand's moving. But you just want to make sure you've got a little bit of some black in there. Because you want it to look like a nice fall night. Back and forth like that. But this part doesn't matter as much because you're gonna have your tree in there. But like I'm brushing back and forth, and then brushing in one direction, and then in the other. Alright, so it should look like that. So now the next step is we're going to fill in our mood. So this is where you can decide on how you really want your mood to look. You can either make it look completely white, you can just do an all white moon. But I personally want my moon to have a little bit of like a cream undertone to it. So what I'm gonna do first is start off with just my white though. So I'm just gonna put some more white on my palette in a different section. I'm gonna clean that same brush, so I'm gonna use it again, make sure it's nice and clean. 
And if I didn't say my water is nice and warm, it's not hot, but it's warm, it'll kind of help get rid of all that extra paint. Okay. You don't want your brush to be too wet because you want this area to be a little bit more opaque. So now I'm gonna go in my white and I'm just gonna fill in my mood. And that's it, we're gonna start off there. It might seem funny that we're putting white on a white canvas, but it'll all make sense later, I promise. If you could hang out with any character from a book, who would it be and why? Okay, this is gonna sound cheesy, but I recently read Midnight Sun, and I have to say, Twilight fans, don't come for me, <laughs> that Midnight Sun is exponentially better. The Twilight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that's how I feel. And so I would a hundred percent want to hang out with Edward Cullen. I think in Twilight he didn't, I don't think Twilight played him as well as he seemed in Midnight Sun. Like for example, when I was reading Midnight Sun, I was just enthralled with like how deep his love was for Bella. And it's just, it, I don't know, there was just like so much like Po like poetism, or I don't know if that's a word, but he's just like has like a really beautiful way of describing his love for Bella. And I just found that so beautiful. I'm a hopeless romantic though, so that's me. I just like found his character development in Midnight Sun to be so much better than in Twilight. He didn't seem like as creepy. <laughs> Still pretty creepy, but like it's like his love was all consuming, and I got that in Twilight, but until I read Midnight Sun, it didn't really click for me. So I would just love to hang out with Edward Cullen and Midnight Sun exclusively. And I would just love to hear him explain how he feels about Bella. Just like listen to him talk and like describe just how he sees her and how he sees the world because I know he's been through a lot, right? But I don't know. It's just something about the way Stephanie Meyer was able to give his perspective on everything was just chef's kiss, immaculate. I would love to hang out with Edward Cullen. <laughs> So, give her base color down for the moon. So now what I'm gonna do is add in a little bit of yellow plus a little bit of extra white to continue on for the moon. Cause like I said, I want it to be more of a cream color. So I'm gonna go ahead, just put in a little bit of yellow, just like a drop or so. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of extra white. So since I'm not a painter, everything that I initially did was very much like a, a freehand experience. So if, as you're painting, you're realizing that things aren't looking the same, the colors aren't matching, do not, do not be disturbed. This is your painting. There's no way that your painting is gonna match mine exactly anyway. So go ahead and make it your own. If you want your moon to be white, yellow, black, pink, green, it's your business, do whatever you want. Okay, so now I have like a nice kind of cream color and I'm just gonna mix it in with the white that's already in the moon. Let's say that you're painting and you realize, oh, your moon's too yellow. You can always add in more white. You just want to have some, like I said, some dimension. And I've mainly started off in the middle of the moon and the edges, I'm gonna wait until the end so that I can really carve it out. It's not gonna be perfect anyway, but you know, if I can get close to that, that's all that kind of matters to me personally. I like have an idea of what I want it to look like, but if it doesn't look like that at the end, it's all good. So I'm going to add in just a little bit of extra white. Just a drop, mix it in again. Same paintbrush. rounding off the edges. So you want to just grab a little bit of paint. You don't want too much. Grab some of the paint off of the brush and just start sketching out the edges just like that.
bits of depth. And that's my moon. That's my background. So that's what we're going to leave for now because we have to let this dry a bit. And so for now, we're just going to leave it and we're going to come back later. So while we're waiting for it to dry, if you could be the famous author of any book, which book would you claim as your own? So I had to really, really think about this because I read a lot. And I recently read a book called The Silent Patient by Alex, I'm gonna butcher his last name, sorry. I think it's Michaelides, Michaelides, not sure exactly. But it was one of the most incredible books that I've read in a very long time. I started at like 8 or 9 p.m. And I didn't finish until 6 a.m. I just, I couldn't, couldn't stop. It was incredible. And it was his debut book as well. Amazing. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of background. I'm not gonna give you too much. So it's a psychological thriller about a forensic psychotherapist who's trying to treat a patient who became mute after she got charged for the murder of her husband. Sounds kind of, mm, mm, mm. wasn't sure when I read the title, I was like, mm. or the background, I was like, mm. <laughs> then I started reading the book and I was like, mm. amazing. So good, extremely riveting. There's so many twists and turns in the book. I literally was on my bed like this. Like, I just couldn't stop. It was such a good book. And if I could, I would claim that book as mine. That would be my book because that book was exceptional. All right, so now the background is just about fully dry. If I can touch it, there we know like streaks or anything. So now the next part that we're gonna do is go ahead and sketch out the tree. Like I said, I'm not an artist, not a painter. So I like to go with like sketches sometimes. It'll help kind of direct you for the next part because this part can get a little bit complicated. Not crazy complicated, but it can be. So what I'm gonna do first is start off with the base of the tree trunk. So I'm just gonna look at the canvas and I'm gonna position it into more of like the middle half of the left side of the canvas, and I'm gonna start my tree trunk around here. I'm gonna have, go ahead and just do like a very rough line. It doesn't have to be amazing or anything. And you can have the tree trunk leaning to the left, to the right, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna do it a little bit leaning to the left. You want it to be about like a finger or two thick. So that's going to be just like the base of the trunk. So the weight of the tree itself is going to, you want to try to get it, is so that it kind of flows out towards the moon. So I'm going to just start drawing some like just random branches so we can fill in those like leaves just later. So for now I'm just going to do like a line, just going out like this, just into this, the moon, because some of the leaves will be touching the moon, especially towards the bottom part of the, the tree. So I'm just going to do a few lines here. And I'm working from the bottom up. Just a few lines here. Just random. Nothing perfect. And then for the left half of the actual tree, you don't need to be very precise because you're gonna mostly cover with red leaves anyway. So you can do a couple branches, you don't have to. I'm gonna just throw in a few just for like reference. few more branches towards the right side as well. All right, so that's what my tree looks like. You probably won't be able to see it very well from where you are because it's on the canvas, but just make sure that you're drawing branches that are spreading out like this. All right, so now I'm gonna add in the black paint just for the base. If you wanted to, you could do like a, a brown tree, whatever you prefer. I want it to be completely black, so that's gonna be very easy for me to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some black just down. And next, I'm gonna grab my thicker pointed paintbrush. I'm gonna wet it first. I'm gonna dip it in, and you're gonna wanna try and get off some of the paint. You don't want it to be super globbed on. And I'm just gonna start by working in the actual tree trunk. So you're gonna see more of my how my sketches look like as I go. So I'm just gonna start filling it in. Just random strokes down, just stroking downwards like this. You just wanna fill it in. If you wanna just plop it in there too, you can. 
that's just kind of what's helping me because I'm going based off of my outline. base of my tree trunk and now I'm just going to fill that in. I'm just doing downward strokes just as I'm filling it in. If you wanted to, you can do different variations of black. You can do variations of brown, you can do some lighter brown, some darker browns, it's really whatever you want. It's your canvas and your painting. Go on the bottom here. This is what I've got going on right now, and I'm just going to go around and just kind of smooth out some of these edges, kind of in one fluid stroke. So now what I'm going to do is clean this off, but I'm going to switch over to a slightly sm a smaller pointed paintbrush, very same shape, but just a little bit smaller. I'm going to go ahead with this one here, same thing, I'm going to wet it, brush it off, grab a little bit of black, and what I'm going to do is start to outline those like random tree branches that I drew in. That's why you want to use a slightly smaller pointed paintbrush. And like I said, make sure you clean off the paintbrush. You don't want it to be super globbed on either. I'm just gonna go ahead. Doesn't gotta be perfect because you're gonna cover them anyway. Just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead for all of my branches. Start from the actual end and work your way down. Don't worry if it doesn't look extremely opaque. Kind of need it to figure out where you're going to do some of your placement for your leaves. Random branches in here. This is the part of the painting where I say trust the process. It'll look crazy, but it'll all work out. branches so what I'm gonna do now is just wait a few minutes and just let the actual tree branches dry and then we're gonna go in and actually add in the leaves okay so now we have our tree branches that are basically all dry it doesn't have to be fully dry but dry enough that it won't be an issue for when we add in our reds and our yellows and our oranges so now what I'm gonna do first is just start off with basic red as like the bottom part here we're gonna start from the bottom we're gonna work our way up and we're gonna cover the entire left side with red leaves so for the leaves, when I was doing it at home, for the first time I tried it, I realized that you can do it multiple ways. You can just stamp it, you can use a paintbrush for this one, or you can use Q-tips if you wanted to. There are several ways you can go about this. I'm gonna use a pointed paintbrush, same one that I used for the tree branches. And because we're adding in a lot of the red base, your paintbrush can be a little bit bigger, so this is the bigger size. Yeah, the largest one of the pointed ones. 
So, I have my paper, so it's been wet. Wiped it off on the paper towel. And now we're just gonna go in and just start plopping. <laughs> so you're basically gonna be stamping in your red leaves because that's just your base. So I'm just gonna grab some. And for this part, you can glob it on because as you go on, you're gonna basically be spreading that paint. So the way that I envisioned it was, I want my tree branches to be spreading out like this. So I'm just gonna start off by just doing a row of red just on the bottom. And I'm just gonna stamp. And I'm gonna take the pet for the paintbrush. I'm going to point it towards the page, this canvas, and I'm just gonna stamp back and forth because I'm just doing like a base. Nothing precise, I just wanna have like a, a base level for where I'm gonna try and end my leaves. So I'm just gonna point. And if you want, as you're pointing and stamping, you can switch between the stamping this method here, and then you can just glob it on. Just This is where it gets fun. Because now it's all about your creative outlet. You can do it however you want. You can put in as many red leaves as you want. A lot of red, a little red, it is whatever you would like. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue stamping these on. I'm gonna stop my full red towards the middle of the trunk. Now I'm going to go ahead and start putting in those stamps along the branches to the left side. Back and forth just like that. They cross, cross over each other, it's completely fine. first red leaves, what do you like to do to relax? So as I said before, I love to read. I am constantly reading if I don't have to do anything. I would rather be in bed all day reading a book than anywhere else. So I'm constantly reading. If I'm not reading, I like to watch a lot of YouTube videos. I'm like big into makeup, so I like to watch makeup videos. DIY videos are always really fun. Um, I like to watch skincare videos because I think skincare is like something that we often neglect when it comes to like our makeup and everything because if your base is good, everything's good. So I love some good skincare videos. I like to learn new different techniques for everything. Um, I love manga and anime. So manga is the readable version. It's Japanese um, comics and graphic novels. And then anime is just the animated version of that. So me and my partner we oftentimes are constantly watching anime or talking about that stuff so that's what I really enjoy reading. I just like to relax. In my, in my relaxation time I just want to just relax, do something really like chill, nothing crazy. I'm not one to be like let's go places because I would rather not. <laughs> I would rather be at home. <laughs> going back and forth, switching my paintbrush from the left side to the right side, and I'm just going to continue my stamping process just like that. But it's nothing precise. I'm also switching between just full-on stamps, just to kind of fill in some of these spaces. And I'm going back and forth just like this. You can start off with a bunch of stamps like I just did with this branch and then go in with your stamps. Now that you've put in your leaves, just your basic red leaves, onto the actual tree branches, what you're going to start to do is start to fill out this entire left side. So like I said, I envisioned my tree branch kind of falling down this way. So I'm going to imagine that the topmost part of my tree is going to start here and fall this way, 
cover most of this side, and then as you start tapering over to the side, you'll see all the other colors of the leaves, the reds, the oranges, the yellows. So this side is mainly just gonna be red. So I'm just gonna start popping in some red right over here, kind of in a downward direction. So I'm envisioning basically like a triangle, kind of cutting off like that. all this red in these empty spaces. Now I'm just doing a lot of just generic dabbing. You just want to be careful because you don't want to fully overlap the red. So we're going to add in a darker red. I decided that I wanted my red leaves to end a little bit lower. I'm just gonna add in some more red down here. I'm just popping, stamping left and right. So it's all on my wrist, just going back and forth like that. Then I'm just gonna start adding in some blobs. <laughs> some dots, if you will. That's the base red color we're going to start off with. So now what you're going to want to do is you can either use the same paintbrush or you can leave it because you might want to start adding in some more of the lighter red with the same paintbrush. So what I would do is just lay this down and I'm going to go ahead and grab a smaller pointed paintbrush and I'm going to just grab a little bit of black from the previous paint that I already used. I'm not wasting any paint. We're using this paint. And I'm just going to add some of that black into a different section, and then I'm going to add some of the red into that same section. So we're going to make like a dark burgundy red color. I'm just going to grab a little bit of black here, and a little bit of red here, and I'm just going to mix it in. Grab some more red, mix it in. You're going to need more red than black for sure. So this color you're going to get is, like I said, a nice, rich, deep burgundy red black color. So now what you're going to do is the same thing. You're going to try not to put too much of this on at once because you're going to add this in so that there's some dimension going for your branches and your leaves. So we're going to just start plopping it in the same way. We're going to stamp it first and then you're going to go ahead and dot it. So I'm going to start off at the bottom again. I'm just going to add some stamps. And I just love the color combination between the dark red and the black red. It just looks so good. I love that for us. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do some down here at the base, and then I'm going to go ahead and add the dark red onto the tree branches. Stamping, moving my wrist left and right. And you'll see that as you're adding in the paint, because you still have that red on there, it's going to mix in. Don't worry about that. You kind of want that. You want to be able to be moving in some of that lighter red with the darker red at the same time. I'm going to move over to this branch here. I'm going to be stamping. best part about this is this is when you can just zone out. If you have some music, you can listen to some music, you can have a show on, and you're just going to be going back and forth because this part is going to take the longest, but I think this is the most rewarding bit. It's going to really make your whole image pop. And now that I've done those leaves, I'm going to just go ahead and fill it in that empty space as well. Just like I did before, just adding some stamps, dots all the way through, dot sporadically, I have no direction exactly, just trying to fill in this area here. Alright, so remember how I said that you might want to use previous paintbrush. 
This is when you're just going to go back and forth between the light red and the dark red. I still have a little bit extra of the darker red, so I'm going to leave it for now, but I'm going to go in with my bigger paintbrush and I'm going to add in some more of that lighter red. Because you want to fill out this whole section over here on the left. <laughs> and once again, you will be mixing that darker red with the lighter red just because it's still wet. And that's all good. I'm doing more stamping, like more dots at this point, just because I have like my base stamps that I already put down. Another thing that you can do is as you're going, you can wait a few minutes, let your paint dry, and then come back with newer dots to add. Because once those face dots are dry, when you're adding in new dots, it won't mix in as much. I'm going to switch and go back to my darker red. I'm going to create a little bit more. I'm going to add in a little bit of black. Scoop some red in there. Make my dark burgundy. Just gonna add it in. Just gonna dot it. Quick back and forth motions. Don't have to be precise. Because the beauty is that the layering is what really adds to this piece. get off as much of the red off this paintbrush as possible because I'm going to use the same paintbrush for the next color. So I'm going to just continue with that red and as I'm going I'm going to try and remove as much of that red, adding in a little bit, depositing as much red onto this section as possible. And this is just fun because you're just going back and forth, you're doing whatever you want, you're freestyling it. So now, I'm going to go ahead and clean this little brush. We're going to use it later. I'll let it soak in there, run it around a little bit. All right, so now you've got a little bit of red left. So now you're going to want to make orange. So you have the little bit of the red that's here. I'm going to add just a drop of yellow. And I'm just going to mix in the yellow to the previous red. And I decided for my painting that I wanted more of like a light orange. So that previous yellow we had that we made for our moon, I'm gonna mix that in as well. Like I said, we are not wasting paint here. So you're just gonna go back and forth between the yellows, the red, and you're gonna get an orange color. So you gotta basically figure out where you want your orange to be. Do you want it to be super light orange? You want to be a dark orange, it's really whatever you want. I'm going to mix in my reds and my yellows until I get the orange that I'm content with.
I've got some of that burgundy color next to me too, so that's gonna help. The good part is you don't, since you're not wasting paint, because you shouldn't be wasting paint, you can go ahead and mix in all the colors to get to the right red, orange that you're looking for. I'm content with this color here. Go ahead and mix it in a little bit more. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put some red just on the side, right next to it. Just a little bit. So now that you have your red and your dark burgundy color, you're gonna start mixing in the middle section between your orange and your red. The orange isn't going to be super strong during this. You're going to see mainly the yellows and the reds, but you want that good medium color or me medium color, medium, medium color, <laughs> the medium color just to balance it. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're just going to try not to put too much in at the same at the first, and we're just going to start plopping. And it's going to look more pink right now. That's okay. We're going to add in a little bit of yellow later, but right now I'm just trying to add in my base. I'm just going all the way down the middle. And I'm just popping, putting some dots down. Just a little here. Now I'm going to start adding in that color to the left. I'm gonna grab that smaller paper that I had. I'm gonna clean it off. I'm gonna dip it, wipe it off, and dip it to my red, and I'm going to mix it back and forth. You want this blend to be almost seamless. You're just gonna go back and forth and clean there. And I'm not liking this orange color as much. I want it to be a little bit more orange. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow on the side and I'm just going to add it in. And I'm still going to use my little paintbrush. Mix it in a little bit. Get a nice vibrant orange going. I'm just going to add it. We're just going to go back and forth in this middle section here. I'm just going back between the reds, the yellows, and my mixture of like almost orange color. Just going between all three of those colors right now. Trying to make sure that the middle part is blending very nicely. And I'm even going to add a little bit of that over into the left hand side. So now you're going to want to start transitioning over into your leaves, all over into the leaves that are going to be on the left side, or sorry, the right side, sorry. Okay, so I'm pretty satisfied with the way the middle of the screen is, <laughs> sorry, the middle of the canvas is looking. So what I'm going to do now is clean this off, I'm going to just put it in my water, Clean it off and then we're going to leave it for later. I'm going to grab a slightly smaller pointed tool, a paintbrush. Same like way, pointed edge. 
clean it off, make sure it's dry. And I'm going to start adding in my yellows to the right side of my tree branch. So right next side, we're just going to stem and back and forth motion. And we're going to go ahead and lay down your first base on all of the tree branches. So Ariel, what upcoming program are you most looking forward to and why? I'm actually looking forward to my next program, of, like the third installment of my DIY skin health series, The Time to Glow. This time we're going to be doing a whipped body butter, which I think is really fun. I haven't done a lot of the whipped body butters, they're usually very time consuming, but I think it'll be a really great thing for this season. It's gonna have an autumnal scent to it. It's gonna smell amazing. So I am super excited. I'm all about skincare, as I was saying before. So I think this is gonna be a really, really fun program for everybody. When will we be able to do that program? So that program is premiering in November. So this is gonna be November 21st. And it's gonna be coming out. I'm gonna have the kids out shortly next week for everyone to go ahead and start picking up. Once again, it doesn't matter if you pick up a lot of the yellow, because you can just go ahead and plop it on. We're just doing our base for our yellow leaves. Now that I've laid my face yellow, this is where you're going to just start mixing in your reds. You're going to create some oranges. So I'm going to go back to my larger pointed paintbrush, clean it off, make sure it's dry, and I'm just going to go in with my red. And you're going to see that you're going to start creating some of that orange and yellow and red depth. So that's what we're going to be doing for a long time, going back and forth between the yellows, the reds, and then creating some oranges to add in as well. just dotting it. Where the yellow is already positioned, just so I can get some of that red, orange, yellow mixture going.
yellow. I need pointed tool, and I'm going to go back in with my yellow, and I'm just going to go back and forth between the yellow and the red. Make it your own, however you want the colors to overlay. You want more yellow, you got more yellow, you want more red, add more red, so on and so forth. And also what I'm going to do is with my red paintbrush, I'm going to go back into some of that dark burgundy red that we made. I'm going to go ahead and add that to I want to go 
too far into the yellows, mainly in the middle section, just so everything transitions. you hold your fingers towards the point of the paintbrush, the more like precise the points are. If you pull your hands away closer towards the end, they're going to be slightly more wide. So it's really however you want to place those. Okay, switch over to a different paintbrush. I'm going to put my other two paintbrushes in the water. Make sure they're clean. This is our smaller paintbrush, still tapered. And I'm going to go ahead and add in some yellow, just by itself, all throughout. Start contrast between the yellow side and the red side.
straight into the red. Mix it in a little bit. So many variations of the reds and yellows and oranges that you can add in here. Oh, however you want it to be. Just start adding in some fallen leaves. I'm just going to go into just the red. You can use the same paintbrush, it doesn't matter. And I'm just going to just randomly throw some red leaves in there. You can do it anyway. You can do the stamping method where you go back and forth. However, you want to. Same paintbrush, I'm gonna, just gonna go straight into the yellow, grab a little bit, mix it up so it's more of your orange tone. Do the same thing again. It's just gonna look. You have a mixture of all your different types of leaves floating to the ground. It's beautiful. Last but not least, I'm going to clean up my paintbrush again. We're going to get just yellow by itself. Go ahead and clean my paintbrush on my paper towel. Grab some yellow. I'm just going to put it in. Still very sporadically. Don't have a specific vision for my leaves. I just want them to look like they're falling. There's wind blowing them away. But I think we're just about done. And that's it. Thank you all so much for coming to our White Oak Libraries Paint and Sew. So this was the painting that I did today. This was the second attempt that I did, and this was my first attempt. So just as you're seeing here, each of my paintings are very different, but that doesn't mean anything. So if your painting doesn't look like my painting, it doesn't matter as long as you've had a fun time and you did your best, that's all you have to care about. So like I said, this was my first one here. I had like a darker background. My colors were brighter in this one. And over here, this is like some like medium version. So whatever happens, just enjoy it. Thank you all again for coming. Make sure to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to our YouTube page. Thank you so much for coming. Bye!